What's up, Block Fam? Welcome to today's episode in the Blockhead Garage. Here with me, we've got Chris, Sick Wide Glide, 25 year master level technician. All right, guys, so in today's episode, uh, we are going over what is a stage two. If you guys are new to the Harley world, modifying your bike and all that stuff, you've probably seen what is a stage one, two, three, and four. Each of those stages signify different performance modifications on the bike. Previously made a uh, what is a stage one video, so if you guys are interested in checking all that, these stages, they all kind of build upon one another. So, this is gonna be going over what is a stage two. This is a Milwaukee 8 2021 Harley Davidson Fat Boy. And the stage one includes air cleaner, power vision tune, as well as a exhaust, which you guys are gonna hear all of this whenever we're done installing the stage two. Over here, we have everything that we need to install this stage two. The actual only part that you need for a stage two, cam lifters and tune. The rest of this is additional modification that the customer wanted to do while we're installing the stage two, which we would actually recommend uh, cam plate and oil pump while you're in there, might as well beef it up. You know, you put more strain on the engine. So these parts from SNS are made to help to uh, deliver better performance as well. We've also got push rods, we've got tappets, we've got tappet cuffs. If you had bone stock and wanted to do a stage two, then it would be paired with the stage one. So you'd need the high flow. You would want to change your exhaust, cam, Push rods, potentially, if you're running an aftermarket cam, you're almost always going to need adjustable push rods unless you get some made for that particular cam. And then if you change a cam, you should always change your lifters. In a nutshell, is your stage two. These right. are kind of a la carte. The aftermarket world has so many options for these vehicles, for these engines, that yep. uh, the possibilities are damn near endless. Big perk of Harley Davidson as a brand, uh, yes. very, very large aftermarket. So Aftermarket support is, is incredible. Yeah. So, all right, we're gonna go ahead and move, get all this stuff over here to the bike, and we will further explain uh, what a stage two is. So basically, what is the cam doing? What are the lifters doing? What are the tappets, all that stuff? All right, so in starting the installation of the stage two, one of the things you need to do is remove the plugs. Why do you need to remove the plugs? So that we can rotate the engine. Uh, we'll, at least one push rod's gonna be under tension, if not two, depending on where your engine stops with it being under tension, you can't cut a push rod under tension. I mean, you can, but it's dangerous and I would never ever recommend that. Just like there's something else I'll never ever recommend and we'll address that when we get there. So basically removing uh, one of the plugs from each cylinder allows you to uh, rotate the engine. You're not fighting compression as you're basically trying to rotate Correct. it. So this will allow you to actually rotate it rather than sitting there like trying to push and push and fight. Correct. <laughs> What's behind that cover? This is screwed into the cam. As we remove this, for those of you that haven't seen this, those that have, cool, you know what we you know what I'm talking about. But those that haven't, when we unscrew this and we take this off, and we pull this off, this will be the end of the flywheel. We're also going to measure our run out while we're here. This, if the cam is not connected to this, then the cam is just there. It doesn't spin. You could spin the flywheel all day. Hence the chain. The tensioner is just that. It puts tension on this chain. Um, as we take this apart, you'll be able to put eyes on it. So what we're saying right now will make a little bit more sense. Cut your push rods out. People are like, cut them out. Yes. And never, never, ever, 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 under any circumstance, ever, 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 use a die grinder to cut them out. Oh my God, no. <laughs> Do you know how many times in my career I have had people come in and I tried to cut my push rods out at home and I did my cam and now my lifters don't pump up. And when you open it up, there's just metal everywhere. Yeah. It's like, how did you cut them out? Oh, I used my die grinder. No. What? Yeah. Do not use an angle grinder to cut your push rods. There's a reason you use bolt cutters because there's no metal left behind. And you need to take real good care as you cut these not to hit this. Do not break this and don't bang up your cylinder fence. If you guys at home notice, there is very little room between here and here when you've got this opened enough to, to chop. Yep. And it doesn't take much to slip and hit a fin and break a fin, or hit this and break this off. Seen that as well. I say it because I've seen it, or in one case, I've done it. Not you. 
Yeah, I was young once. As everybody in the comments says, how do you have 25 years experience? Aren't you like 22 years old? I wish, thanks. <laughs> All right, so what was the purpose of that? Cutting, cutting out the push rods? To access the cam without taking off the fuel tank and the top covers and all this extra work that, let's be honest, I don't want to do. Right. <laughs> you at home don't want to do. You yourself don't want to do. It's a do. lot more extra work. It is. And you know, because you've done it with me a few times. Yep. How many screws are in there? <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Just and that's not even that's not even most of the oil lines is the ah, most fun part. Yeah, it's a, it can be fun. Yep. Remember, we got the crank sprocket, cam sprocket, chain, tensioner. These all work in unison. Once we remove these, again, as I said earlier, this is the end of the cam or the end of the crank, and this itself is the cam. There they are, plastic. So those are the lobes, causing those to move up and down. The lobes, in case you're wondering at home, are those. Yep. So basically, as we're spinning this, the end of that is that right there. Okay. Let's pull one out, show them. But these have wheels on the end. See this rolls, and these actually ride on this. And the as cam. this rotates, this rolls, and it causes this to push up and down. And whenever that goes up and down, it pushes the push rod up and down. Pushes the push rod up and down that we've cut here. And there is a piston in here. It's a hydraulic piston. Once this is compressed a certain amount, it has a squish factor on both ends. In essence, this pushes on this. Of course, it's not going to be cut. It'd have a nice round end. It'll push on the, the ball end like that. Yep. So that be... rides on that. That is connected in between. That in turn hits the rocker arm. So this is why I brought this piece over. This is the head of the engine. So that is this piece right here. So you've Up got your lower rocker down. Are the ends of face right here. So. Those holes are those holes. And the push rods ride up through there and they hit this. And as that cam turns, as that cam turns, as the crank rolls, it goes through the chain, which rotates the cam, which causes these to go up and down. And what's connected between here and here, which is your rocker arm, push is rod. the push rod, which we just cut out. When this goes up, it compresses the valve spring. It pushes this down, which opens the valve split. And as you see from the bottom, right now the valves are closed. Obviously, once they're open, air can move from either out of the combustion chamber or into the combustion chamber. So the cylinder basically attaches to here. You've got your head gasket, which goes there, and you've got air being pushed in through the valves and then the exhaust being pushed out through the valves as well, Correct. which is controlled by the push rods, which is controlled by the profile of the cam. Correct. We Why? left out a couple other things like the piston and right. the fact that it moves up and down, which creates vacuum, which draws the air in through the uh, throttle body. Right. And then creates as compression. it compresses, yep. it ignites, boom, spark plug fires. Here's the hole yep. for one and here's the hole for the other. And as that fires, then it that burnt gas forces the piston back down. And as the piston comes back up, the exhaust valve tends to open and it pushes everything out. The bigger one of these you have, not always, here's one the guys will like, it's not always the size, but <laughs> but it is the duration and the lift in combination with your heads <laughs> and your ignition. Um, but let's be real, the bigger this gets, the better and bad, more bad this can be. So why though? The simple answer to it is the, the more air you can get in and the faster you can get it in and the faster you can get it out the more horsepower you're going to build yep. on the torque side you want to slow it down just a little bit but you still want to force all that air in yep. to build more torque you would actually there are multiple ways to do this it's done through a cam it's done through an intake it's done through uh timing fuel everything so it's called the milwaukee 8 because it has eight valves for your head. 
which is what these are here, or rather there. So four on the front, four on the back, eight. What Made in Milwaukee, it, Milwaukee 8. What does it share with the Evo that it does not share with a twin kit? And it also shares that with a later shovel and no engine earlier. Ooh, you guys drop a comment down below if you guys know the answer to this trivia. We'll wait. Do, 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 do. One cam. One cam. It's a single cam. Yeah. The earlier shovels, your pans, knuckles, F heads, they all quad cam. So each lifter had its own particular cam, much like you saw in your sports gear. Right. Evos and the Milwaukee 8 share one rack with four lobes. Yeah. Now this does have four valves per head, so again, that has changed its sound characteristics, but this is a really good sounding engine when they're tuned right. Yep. We all like the sound of these, especially when they hit with a good lobe. Ah, yeah. There's that, that noise, that is Harley. Yep. Twin cams don't make the same noise. They don't. They sound good, but it's not the same. My Evo, you know, that thing sounds good. Yeah, dude, a carb, carb Evo. Nope. <laughs> All right, guys, so Chris has gone ahead and pulled the cam. He pulled the cam plate and the oil pump, which is all connected here. So the uh, cam chest. And is... I pulled it all as one piece. Yeah, it's all draining into here. Now, this is a really technical piece. Uh, this is a baking pan from Winn-Dixie. This was like one of the first things that we bought when we, when we opened the shop. <laughs> we went to Winn-Dixie and bought these baking pans. So super useful whenever you're Doing something like this, you need to drain oil, oh, low profile. Eight, right? yeah. yeah, it's a perfect brownie pan, bro. It, yeah, it is. Oh. And we have the other one that we can do chicken wings and stuff on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so check out this bearing and notice the amount of rollers on the inside of it. Versus this performance bearing. Been a far superior bearing for a long time. All right guys, so this is what it looks like inside of the cam chest. Oh man, I'm bleeding. Ah! Uh, Chris is using this blood of his to um, <laughs> lube parts. It is actually assembly lube, it is not blood. For those of you that think you have to use blood in your stage two install, you do not. It's the only way to get it to go fast. We also do not, uh, unless you want Chris to, and then it'll actually give you extra horsepower because he is horsepower bay. So. <laughs> no Chris's were harmed in the making of this stage two video. <laughs> so through the stiction. This won't fall off. For those of you that say, oh, well, what happens if I go to put it in and it falls off? Then you did something wrong. Then you are not utilizing the stiction of the <laughs> assembly lube. Basically. Right there is bottom. Ah! It's for measuring crank runouts. What's the max runout that the factory says is acceptable? I don't know. 12 which is very large. Yeah, we're at eight. So, eight thousandths. All right, so bearings in, deflection is measured. What's left is reassembly. <laughs> Look at me acting like I know what I'm talking about. I, didn't I just say that off No, camera? what are you talking no. about? It wasn't on camera, it doesn't exist. All right guys, so we've got the cam plate oil pump. Chris is putting that 25 year master level technician blood on it. Adding that horse purr. <laughs> this is a billet plate, much thicker, <clears throat> much more durable. It has a brass bushing on both the crank end and the cam end. This is known as parent material, meaning there is no bushing. It is simple, simply aluminum. So you can imagine if a small piece of metal or dirt or debris got in there and ate that up, you have to can that whole plate. Mm. And it will eventually just eat it up and it get worse and worse and worse. Uh, with a brass bushing, one advantage, you can replace the brass bushing. This brass bushing, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a small channel cut all the way around that in both ends here. That is fed by oil pressure. So in essence, we can't see it, 
but there's a small air gap or oil gap between this brass bushing and this surface. Hmm. And it's being maintained by the oil pressure. It's like um, the oil is keeping it from actually touching. This does a very similar thing. It's got a, uh, an oil hole and it will maintain some oil pressure as well, but it doesn't have a full galley all the way around like this one does. So if for any reason you dropped any kind of oil pressure at any moment for any reason, run your oil too low, you're out there beating it up and your oil thins out, <clears throat> you're gonna lose that film, which is the protection layer. Whereas on this one, your chances of that happening are much less. And again, if that were to happen, this bushing can re be replaced and this door doesn't have to be replaced. That is a three-piece pump. This here is a two-piece. What I mean by three-piece, there are three channels. There's a feed and two returns. This one has one return, one feed. Cast aluminum versus billet. It's been proven to be a better material for a very long time. Plus, it's f***ing blue, man. That's awesome by itself. Beautiful. Exactly. So for those of you that don't know, in my 131 Goldzilla, my Softail 131, low rider S, uh, we're pushing 151 horsepower and 150 torque. Got an SNS 590 cam, and we used the same oil pump and cam plate. We did the Guardian kit as well, so which is like roller rockers and stuff in the top end. And it has been running great. I've had zero issues, and I've probably almost got like 10,000 miles on that kit. And you don't ride it like nice. No, I do not ride that bike nice. I beat the hell out of it. <laughs> because that's how it's meant to be, like, that's how it's meant to be ridden. It, it is, at this point. Yep. And as we have said numerous times, this is your bike is kind of for science. Yep. Like, we're, we're going to build it mean and we're going to ride it mean until something breaks. And to be honest with you, I'm surprised nothing has broken yet. Same. So it's just a testament to... Both Harley, SNS, SNS as a manufacturer of engines and aftermarket parts that go on Harley Davidsons, uh, they say it's it's a good engine, which is cool to hear from them. You know, it's like they're the, one of the industry well, leaders. So yeah, and, and I I can't remember your guy's name at SNS, but I do recall when we talked to him about what we wanted to do originally. His statement was, "I hope you break it. Let us know where it failed." Yeah, like that was. <laughs> yeah, they're wanting us to break it too. It, it, yeah, like <laughs> we're trying to find it. Yeah. Which we will eventually, but like beat it up. I'm, I'm waiting to see what the belt holds because you know that's a big thing. Yep. Everybody says, "Oh, it's got a belt. It should, needs a chain." Needs a chain. I don't believe so. It's fine so far. So we're gonna beat the hell out of that thing until we break it. Yep. So on note of power, since we we're just mentioning power with Goldzilla and all, and me doing the same cam plate oil pump with a stage two, about how much power would somebody be looking to gain from changing out the cam and the tune? Well, there's some variables there. There's exhaust type of intake. There's there are some some factors that can give you better or less than better numbers. But on average, with say a 475 SNS 475 cam, um, I usually see numbers in the ballpark of 130. I've seen some as good as 135. We've tuned out some really good ones. That's torque, and then horsepower. It's again, that it's going to vary on your exhaust and your intake, but it can land as high as 119. So the best one that I've done personally was 136 foot pounds and 117 horsepower. I've also done a few that are around 130 and have that 119 horsepower, where the, the horsepower is a little bit higher. Right. But again, that's a difference in exhaust yeah. intake and maybe how it was tuning that day. I mean, yeah. some bikes tune a little bit better and some engines run a little bit sweeter and some, you know, it's just the nature of it. It's one of those things that you guys will learn if you continue to, you know, be into the motorcycle segment is that like you can take two of the exact same bikes, same engine, same transmission, same everything, same everything. that came off the floor, like the factory assembly line, one right after the other. We tease that one might be a Friday bike and one might be a Monday. Bike. <laughs> yeah. But they're going to be they're going to be different. It's yep, they're going to make different numbers. I mean, they're going to be very similar, but they're going to make different numbers and they're going to tune different and, you know, they're going to take the modifications differently. So, no one bike is like any other out there. It's they're all unique. In my experience, stock 114 
is typically in the ballpark. Again, it can be up or down, depending on the engine, but it's typically 103 to 105 torque. Horsepower can be as low as 85, and I've seen as good as 89 uh, on a stock 114. So if you take those numbers and you extend that horsepower from, say, 90 to 119, what are we looking at there? Or oh, 20 or 30 horsepower? Yeah. Increase in torque, pretty equal, I would say. So we go from, say, right, if you got as high as 130 coming out of anywhere between 100 and 105. Yeah, so whatever that percentage is, there you go. <laughs> All right, mathematicians, get on it. When you put the pump on here, it can sit at a different angle, it can sit slightly cockeyed. If you were to just start tightening these, not in a sequence, you want to pull it as flat as possible. So you want to seat it against the plate and then you want to turn the crank. So the pump will basically self-center and then you apply light torque and then we'll break out our torque wrench and actually torque it to value. Hmm. But we want to seat it centered. Um, it's been a process for a long time. So what are you doing here? I'm placing these in oil. These are the lifters. Because I just think it's fun. <laughs> I'm marinating them. <laughs> gonna grill them up later. Now we're gonna get our vacuum. Creating a vacuum, right? So it's basically sucking all the air out of this hard chamber and it's removing the air from inside of the lifters, causing oil to go into them. So essentially he's priming the lifters Man, that's smart. That makes that job a lot faster and way more accurate. Hey, did you know that on our last video, the percentage is going down? It is, which means more of you guys are subscribing. Yay. Hooray. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Do us a favor. Hit the subscribe button. It's free. Hit the like also. If you guys are enjoying the content like this, be sure to hit the like. The people that are watching these videos that are not subscribed is between like 50 to 60 percent-ish. So if you all could do us a favor, the content is free. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell. It's, it's free too. And um, yeah, drop a comment. Let us know your thoughts. Thanks. Appreciate you. That's how they work. Ain't that fancy. All right, guys, so that is a wrap for the install of the stage two. Like we were saying earlier, uh, these stages do build upon one another. So the stage one is the high flow air cleaner, the tune, and the exhaust. The stage two is the cam and the tune as well. So the stage one tune and the stage two tune are different tunes. Once again, with this customer, he did a couple additions to the stage two. So he did the oil pump upgrade as well as the cam plate upgrade from SNS, push rods, as well as tappets, tappet cuffs, which is one of those things like while you're in there, you might as well beef it up. You might as well do it. If you don't want to, it's okay. Like it's still a stage two, but in terms of labor, it's really not that much more if you're looking to have it done. Uh, if you're not doing it yourself, pretty much ready to go. There is a tune on it for the stage two which we went with the dynajet power vision and load the tune on there because we see the absolute best results with dynajet we've tried a number of different tuners on builds so we're pretty much ready to crank it up hear how it sounds <laughs> So that's how it sounded stock. And then with the stage two, it does change the exhaust profile a bit just because it's, it sounds like a little more lumpy, right? And the timing isn't the same. It's got a bit of a higher lift. I think he's gonna like it. So the first initial startup has got to warm up a bit, right? Because your, your first idle, it's running a higher idle to warm up the engine to get it up to operating temp. Once it reaches operating temp, it drops the idle down. So that's the, uh, that's that sound of the stage two. All 
All right, so there you guys go. That is the stage two. Now there are different cam profiles that you can go with. Customer went with S 475 cam. Different manufacturers have uh, the different numbers, which usually uh, explains kind of the profile. And then mine, wherever my bike is, I think over there, it's got the SNS 590 cam. So the 590 is a race cam. It's like all top end. We're talking like 4,500 RPM and above where it really turns on. This one, you're probably looking more in what, like the 2000 to 5000 range? Two to 22 and a half is when it comes on strong. Um, yeah, it runs out about probably five. That is the install. Uh, hope it was insightful for you guys. If you have any questions, uh, be sure to drop them down in the comments below. Let us know. This is a service that we do offer here in the Blockhead Garage. So if you guys are wanting to book service, go to blockheadgarage.com, fill out the form, let us know what you guys are wanting done, and we will be in touch. Really appreciate you, Craig, bringing the bike in and uh, looking forward to what your first reaction is going to be whenever you get back on this bike. Because it's, I mean, the stage two totally changes the handling, the feel of the bike. Oh yeah! <laughs> Silky ducky quack quack baby, I'm telling you man! Yo! Yo, Chris, totally awesome. I'm glad you're happy with it man, thank you oh, again man, dude. thank you! Real appreciate it's you. Work, I'm like, oh, yeah, baby. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, bell, follow, leave us a comment, let us know what you guys thought. Ride safe, stay vigilant, we'll catch you guys in the next one.